All right, so in the last one, we added the ability to do quantities and then add some text for some attribute. So like in this case, it'd be color. Um, and then we could add that to the cart. Well, realistically, we'd rather have a drop down menu here and have that drop down menu based off of our model for product, right? Or for this specific product. Because if we don't have a drop down menu here, we might we might lose some people and they might not, they might be just a little bit extra confusing. And also this two buttons of added cart is also confusing. So we'll get rid of that first one. So let's actually jump into sublime text um, into single.html for our product. I'm gonna select this whole um, t uh, link here. So the a tag and I'll do command slash that allows us to comment it out automatically uh, you could manually add this stuff in but um, sublime text allows us to comment it out that way all right so now we should just have that one form cool that's what we have that's what we want to see and we could even do this one more step and add div class of let's say column small um, let's do eight and then we'll call it pull left and then i'm going to put that on the outside of that so what this is doing is it's going to separate now the form from the um, text and it will be above within that div that main div right there so then div class equals to column small four pull right and put that around the form oh not not form here but outside of the form itself div okay and we can tab that in tab that in and now if we go back in here, it's now pulling that stuff over a little bit. So we might want to actually even add this into its own div itself. So we'll be div class equals column small 12. So it's that full length of everything. And perhaps we want to have it with the HR tag in there as well. And div and then add this as well. All right, refresh there. Now it looks a little bit better. Uh, so all I did was inside of this columns small eight is I put two columns here or two basically sets of columns here. So the first set is gonna be eight wide and then the second set is four wide. And then below that I have um, our price and all that details and then our actual details for uh, the next one going down. And that's how, that's what these are for. So column small 12 it's not actually 12 in the sense that it goes all the way across, but it's 12 in the sense it goes all the way across of the parent column uh, columns, which would be this one right here. All right, so there's that. And I can tab these in so I can just see it a little bit better. So we know kind of where the div classes are and all that. And we can also tab this one in. So this is the parent columns, set of columns, and then each uh, underneath it is showing uh, kind of what we want. All right, so now we want to, maybe we should add the added cart above this, right? So actually at the top of the form instead of at the bottom, like most forms are at the top, but if you wanted to change your quantity and the color, a lot of times you'll see that at the bottom. So now I wanna make this form a little bit more bootstrap friendly. So the button, the input type, I'm gonna add a class to it. So class equals to btn, and we'll say btn dash default. So this is from Bootstrap. And now it, it, the button looks a little bit nicer. And if we actually look into uh, getbootstrap.com in components and then down to forms. Oh, actually, this is going to be in CSS. And then forms. We see, okay, I want it to look a little bit more like this. So if we look at the different form examples, we can see that here. And this main one is form control. This is the class that we want to add to our different inputs with the exception of that button because it's actually a button. It's not a form control element or a form element really. It's just really a button. All right, so now what we just did is just change it. So we have an add to cart and then uh, a way to do a number as well as um, add, typing in some text. And maybe we want this button to be full so we can do button block so button block means it's gonna take up the entire parent. So it's gonna go through that whole thing. So if this was a little bit bigger, like six, 
it would make the button a lot bigger, right? So, and that's the same with form control too. It makes those also a lot bigger. All right, well, that's cool. But we talked about making this into a drop down instead of just being a color. Um, so let's actually go ahead and do that. And what we'll do here is instead, like below it, I'll actually put select and we'll call the class being form control, control. And then the name is gonna be, we'll call it attribute, just like what we've seen before. All right, so now I can put different items in here, different options for selecting. So option, I'm just gonna grab this and paste it a few times. And then we'll just add a value of, let's say like red, and then we'll give it red, just like that. Value being green. And I'm gonna leave the value as a lowercase just to make it so we can work with lower cases instead of worrying about capitalization. And then we can do value equals to blue and blue. All right, I'm gonna actually get rid of that last one. All right, so this is giving it the name just like what we did before. This is the class. We don't have to specify the type because the type is going to be um, uh, it's a select, it's not an input, so it's automatically going to have a drop down. All right, so now we have this. If we refresh in here, we see, oh, look, now I have a drop down menu instead of text. So I can actually select one of these and then go to add to cart. And we should have printed out, I believe it's still printing. No, it doesn't look like it is. So let's actually go into our view and we'll print out the attribute. So print ATDR. Let's try that one more time and hit add to cart. Notice up here, we have two problems here. One of them's being that attribute is coming through twice, not once. And that's because of our input, but let's just refresh and see if it shows it for us. And it says green, just like what we thought. Um, but I don't want it to come in twice. So I'm gonna get rid of this input right here. The one that we had beforehand and now if we look at it we have these different colors that we can now choose from hit add to cart and if we print it out we see that what color it's actually selecting so this is where it can get a little tricky because if we're doing a bunch of t-shirts it'll make sense to have different attributes or different variances uh, for one specific t-shirt right so if, if this was a t-shirt and blue is what we were selling and we had one cart well, that's okay, we can send it as blue, but what if we also had size? So we'll have, we have quantity, color, size, right? So that's a whole nother, a whole nother thing. So if we look at this, if I just copy this, paste that in, and then we said small, medium, large, and a new name for size, well, then we're gonna, we're actually gonna start building all these new types of things to it, right? So it's gonna be sizes, we're gonna have colors, we're gonna have all these new things. So this can create th it to be a little bit complicated where when we add this to the cart, uh, we can store, we can grab the data, but where exactly do we store it and how do we store it? So what I'm actually gonna do is first off, I'm going to change our cart item to include order notes of some kind or the cart item notes. Um, so specifically to that cart and that product, we're gonna add notes to it that would essentially take account for um, all of the different things that we're pushing through here. So in this case, color and attribute. So we could actually, or excuse me, attribute and size. So we can change attribute to color that makes more sense for this right here. So we'll do color and size, right? So in this case, for this product, we would actually be able to grab color and size, but what if our product does not have a color and size? So that's something we'll work towards. So now in our models uh, for our cart items specifically, uh, we are gonna add notes. So right under line item total, I'm gonna do notes equals to models dot um, char field, or actually I'll do just text field, and we'll do null equals to true, and blank equals to true. Now this is not necessarily going to be the best way to do this, but it will be a good initial way to kind of see how we can store data 
and then we will eventually move it to where it's it's a lot smarter than what we're gonna what we're about to do. All right, so now I'll do Python manage.py schema migration carts auto, and then Python manage.py migrate carts. All right, so now I have these carts running. So let's run the server again. The cart is now working. We have notes in here. So then in our view, uh, not view.html, but the view.py, we just need to update this as well as um, our next one, which would be, so let's go ahead and copy this and paste it. And we did color and size. So color, 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 oops, size. This should be color, size, and size. Get rid of this, get rid of this, all right. So size, um, well, it's probably more more than likely it's gonna come through, but we'll just say none for now. It's actually definitely gonna come through because it's you can't not have one, just how we have it set up right here. We have, there's definitely something selected at every time. So we'll definitely get a color and size, but we can still do the try just to make sure that we have all that stuff set up. So now that we have that, and if integer is, what we wanna do actually if here is integer is less than or equal to zero, then we'll delete it. So if it's a negative number, then we'll just delete it, right? So that's that handles negative numbers just fine. Otherwise, we wanna do cart item, now we have quantity, and we just added that notes, so we'll do cart item notes equals to, well, we wanna have some notes here. So let's actually add in a new dictionary here, and we'll call it notes equals to that, and then notes color equals to color, equals to color, and then notes size, oops, size equals to size. All right, so then this will add the notes or the color and size into notes. And then we will actually be able to add the notes in here so we can save it. So I'm gonna grab this notes, save it in here, and there we go. All right, so what this is doing is basically it's just grabbing those two attributes that we added to this call, which is color and size, and it's gonna save them. If there's nothing in there, if we don't actually set a size or a color, then it's gonna say none, but we already passed through a size and a color. So let's actually go ahead and try this out. And I'm going to go into product, I'll go to red, I'll blue and large. Add to cart, all right, it looks like no errors came through, so let's look in the admin. And we got cart items, cart item one. Uh, this is product two, so it's the wrong one. Let's go down to one. And now we see that we have these this dictionary for color, blue, size, blue. So this just allowed me to have um, a nice list of choices that are added to this actual item, right? So if I wanted to actually work with those choices in my like um, in my view of my cart, to do that, I'll have to open up my cart. And then what we can see is, let's actually add a new line item or a, a new column. So we'll do uh, notes, we'll just call it notes for now. So now we have that, we can add it in here. So down uh, next to remove, I'm gonna add another column. So I'm just gonna separate these out so it's a little bit more, I can read, compare these a little bit better. So TD, so item.notes, All right? So it should have notes now. Close off the, the column there refresh on our view of our cart. So let's go into cart. And now we see color blue, size blue. Up, oh, uh, blue and blue. Ah, oh, it looks like we must have set something wrong. So maybe it's in our view. So let's go ahead and look in our view. Views.py, uh, we have notes color equals to color. That all looks okay. Maybe it's the value that's actually being pushed. So let's actually go and look at single.html. And yeah. I copied this select to being size and I didn't change the value, I just changed what it displayed. So we'll just say SM, MD, MED, and then large or LRG. 
Okay, so now if I go back into the product and I add red and small to cart there, now the size is correct. And product two, I can just remove it or I could have just added the colors and then boom, notes would actually show up for it. All right, cool. So that's actually allowing us to show notes specifically for any given product. Now we don't necessarily have to have our notes displayed. Um, we could just leave the product and then use something to actually open up our, our cart notes because if I try to go into my cart and go to notes.color um, and refresh, it, it doesn't actually show it, right? Because it's not stored in the same way that, that everything else is. Um, it's it's stored in a as a dictionary, but uh, we can't just unpack that dictionary just like that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll actually take a much different approach to this than where the direction we're currently going because we could figure out how to actually unpack this stuff and show it in the notes and then make it so that when you check out and you have your order and all that it's going to show the color and the size and stuff like that but realistically we want to have variances that are associated directly to the product just like images are associated directly to the product we're going to do something very similar. So all of this stuff is automated. It is not where we have to manually enter it uh, each time. Like we will have to enter it at some point, but you know, in our um, when we're actually pushing this through, the variances should come from models, not where we're hard coding the HTML, because uh, that makes a lot more sense, right? So if we have several or or, or all types of variances for this product, right? So let's say, for instance, we had. Um, not just a t-shirt, but we had a t-shirt and jeans package or something like that, then you'd want to have those variances in there, right? So like, or a pack of three t-shirts and you are offering um, one, that one pack will have three different colors and then three different sizes with those colors. I mean, it can get very complicated. And if we go along this route, uh, it's going to make it very hard on us uh, depending on what the product is. So we need to be smart about it and add it into the model. So that's actually what we'll do next. Uh, but the point of this whole lecture was to understand better on how these actually work or forms work without using Django, right? So I'm not really using Django here. Um, I mean, the action is going to one of our Django URLs, but this could have very well have been just a written out URL, like some URL and just like that, right? So it could have been done that way and you would have able, been able to update the cart. Now, of course, there's a few things that we probably don't wanna have with this, is that if if you have it where it's a git action, like what we've done, um, then it's very possible that this could be changed from a different website, right? So if somebody actually figured out, I don't know how they'd figure it out, but if they figured out that you are running a git, uh, and this is how you're updating your, your quantities and your color and stuff like that, maybe they could actually mess around with it and stuff. And especially since our, our cart ID is actually in the session, um, there's there's possibilities for errors there. Um, so what we're gonna do in the next one is we're gonna get rid of a lot of this stuff. And then we're gonna actually add in product variances to the product models. And then within our cart item, we will actually have those variances um, or at least do some way of tracking those variances for that specific cart item, right? Just like what we're gonna do with the product itself, we will also have to do it with the cart item itself. So we will have those variances, but then we also need to make sure that we have those variances associated to one specific cart item. All right, so we will start doing that in the next one.